Hello and welcome to another part of Design Your Own Level Tutorial. In this video, what we will be doing is creating these lighting fixtures and lights, as you can see over here, hanging from the roof, even though they're not really hanging, as you can see, we just kind of like have a little bit of a cheat over here. And we'll also be creating these panels, which are essentially exactly the same as the floor panels over here. Now, I haven't uh, created the um, support for them to be hanging um, yet, but that's a fairly easy process. You can just make a normal um, cube and stretch it out and make it hang. So I didn't really think I should uh, implement that now. It's a fairly easy process. But uh, with these lighting fixtures, I did create them um, to try and kind of like mimic what was done inside of Mirror Edge. So I created two different variations. And basically, um, inside of the tutorial, we'll only be focusing on creating this one over here. But essentially, this one that I created here is exactly the same as that one. I just scaled out the bottom um, piece a little bit. And then the wires, I just made them go into different directions uh, to kind of like give them a different look. Also, uh, what I want to just point out is that this is essentially one mesh. Uh, I created a singular uh, light, which we will import into Unreal Engine 4. But you can also like do different light combinations, like uh, put five of them together. And the reason why I did this is that essentially I I'm, I talk a little bit about draw calls inside of the tutorial. And because I created four different materials for it, essentially this is four different draw calls. And then every time you put a light down, it would have been an additional draw call plus these four. So if you put all five of them into uh, like one model, combine them all inside of your 3D uh, program and you just export them together and they register as one model, then this is one draw call plus these are four draw calls. Where with this one, if I were to duplicate it five times, it would be five draw calls for the model plus four additional draw calls for each model. So if you don't know what a draw call is, it's just essentially what the engine um, tells the your graphics card to uh, what what uh, object to call upon when when drawing it. Now less draw calls essentially equals to better performance. So that's why you want to lessen it. But this is just something that I quickly just want to take on. It's something that we're going to cover much later in the. Um, end of the tutorial when we want to increase performance. So for now, uh, we're just going to focus on creating this one light, but there's no limitations to the variations that you can do yourself and you can just add them all in as such. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. So uh, enough of me rambling and let's just get started right into the creation process. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we just want to actually see or just um, take note of what we need to create. Now, if you can recall, in one of our previous videos, we created these floor panels. Now, essentially, we are going to create the roof panels. It's going to be exactly the same thing. So we can reuse this floor panel over here. Then if we jump over to our um, inspiration video, uh, we can see that there's also a square panel that we need to create. And then as well, we need to create these cables running down. We'll create one or two different variations and then we'll just uh, reuse them. And then we need to create the, this lighting fixture and then the light itself. As you can see, there's two different variations of light. There's a round bulb and then this cylindrical bulb over here. And then there's something interesting inside of it, these little dots. But I want to create something a little bit more interesting. It might be a little bit high on the poly count, but it all really depends on what you want to do in your game itself. So. What I'm going to do is then jump over to Blender and I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a circle and I'm going to change the vertices of the circle to 8. Then I'm going to hit R to rotate it on the X axis. You just hit X and then you type in 90 for 90 degrees and then you rotate it on the X axis. Okay, I'm just hitting the numpad period key to make sure that that's my center object. Then I'm going to go over to 
well let's rename it quickly let's call it uh, light uh, bulb in uh, the in is just for inside but uh, it doesn't really matter you can name it what you want um, then I'm going to go to the modifiers tab I'm going to add a modifier it's going to be the screw modifier now you see it created these funny edges I think I'm still in wireframe mode if you had Z you go out of it and then you'll see it looks weird so I'm just going to do the, this on the Y axis but now it's trying to make like this spinning top or a cylinder but it doesn't look quite right the reason for that is you tap to go into edit mode and then you just move it on the y-axis outwards I'm oh, sorry the, it's at the y-axis the x-axis outwards and then you'll see that it's creating a torus like shape then what you do from there is you just click the screw option here on the right I think I'm going to make it all the way up to three and then iterations one two three four five let's do six iterations but it is a little bit high this is going to be fairly high on the poly count and as this is a small object we don't really want it to be that high so we can reduce the steps as you can see uh, maybe not that far we'll keep it at six steps so it does kind of give still give a smooth round appearance and okay now let's just render steps and that should actually be it because we already reduced our sphere all the way there i'm just going to uh, make a copy of this by in object mode hit shift d and then i'm going to hit m to move it to one of my empty layers as you can see over here i'm going to move it over there and the reason for that is i just want to create a duplicate copy of it just in case i mess up and i can just go back to it and, and it saves myself some time okay then i'm going to hit apply and i'm going to take this bottom one over here and i'm just going to hit e to extrude i'm going to extrude it out scale it inwards and then hit f to fill just to give it like a kind of a round look at the bottom this one I'm not too concerned about, but what I am going to do is I am going to rotate it by 45 degrees, maybe negative 45. Then hit E to extrude and then rotate that by negative 45 as well. And then do something like this. So that the light does kind of have a something that it's going to go into. So it doesn't just look like it just hanging in the middle of nowhere okay so from here i'm going to hit shift a again i'm going to add another circle still on eight vertices move it all the way up to there and then i'm going to scale it out so it kind of like just goes a little bit over the size of what this lighting fixture is then i'm going to tap to go into edit mode and then i want to get something that kind of matches up with this and as you can see there's like this line over here i don't know if it will show on the youtube video uh, but the, essentially what they did here this is geometry as you can see there is a little dent in there this isn't like a, a normal map that they created to make that line it is actual geometry so what we're going to do is we're going to hit e to extrude bring it a little bit up all right by normals or inverted so i'm just going to select all of them and hit Control n to make sure that they're on the outside and then I'm going to select the top um, circle. The, the way you select this is just by holding Alt and right clicking and will select everything over there. I'm going to hit E to extrude and then scale, holding control, uh, scale inwards, one. And then hit E to extrude again, scale up. And then E, do it again, and then scale out. Remember to hold control when you're doing this so you can snap the grid and it's easier for you to get everything into line. And then I'm going to hit E to extrude all the way to the top. And then I'm just going to do it a few more times. Now it's going to be a small one over there. And then we kind of got the look that we're going for. So if you look at the lighting fixture... And here it's a little bit smaller than what the bulb would be. We can still scale it always from here. We can still just go and do something like that if the sizes aren't correct. 
this is just for us to get uh, our feel and our look right. All right, so what I'm just going to do from here is then just hold Alt and right click and fill this. So that's filled. And I can see everything comes down where we need it to be. Then what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add a cube. And then tab into edit mode, I'm going to hit W, and then subdivide smooth. And then you'll see it gives us this nice, uh, nice shape, um, kind of like a circle sphere. I'm going to select this part over here, and I'm going to hit E to extrude. All right, so you can see now it's starting to come around nicely. So essentially what I did is I made like this, uh, I smoothed out a cube by adding additional vertices to it. And then I just like um, dragged it out and scaled it out to the size that I wanted it to be. Actually, I think that is pretty good. It's a little bit too tight on the corner, so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and then try and match it up with that over there. All right, and I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we can maybe bring this piece up a bit. So it doesn't need to be all the way. Let's just see that nothing gets through. All right, so I'm just going to enable smooth shading on both of these. And... Uh, what what I did actually want to show is um, there is a way for you to get your, your flat shading across onto smooth shaded objects if it is a metallic object and you want it to look slightly different. It's not really going to matter that much when we apply texture to it, but I just want to show it anyway. So if you go into your object and you go to your uh, object data and auto smooth, if you enable auto smooth, it's based on the angle. And also, if you mark certain objects as sharp or not. So, it all really depends on how you want this to look. I kind of like the smooth look for here. Um, so, I'm just going to leave it as is. That is something that you fix up much, much later when you're busy working on on your um, when, on your second pass. When you're busy cleaning up your, your work and you're trying to uh, increase performance. All right. So this is pretty much all of this done. This is uh, what we wanted to create with our light. Now, what we do is we want to create that nice long cable that runs from it. So what we're going to do with that is I'm going to center my view, Shift C, Shift A, and I'm going to add a curve, and I'm going to add a path curve. I just want to actually make sure that this kind of lines up. So I'm just going to rotate it by negative 90 degrees. So it's a straight line. And then I'm going to add it up here. And then one more thing that we need to do is we're going to add another curve, a circle curve. And I'm just going to move that all the way over there. And then on your curve properties here on the right, you'll see that one over there. This one, what we want to do is we want to decrease the resolution. So it kind of matches up. Uh, remember, we had eight sides. So that kind of matches up with that there. And then this one, what we want to do is we want it to be, I think it's tapered by an object, but let's just, let's quickly rename this one. So we'll call this, um, cable curve okay so if we reselect that one uh, it's, I don't think it's taper I think it's bevel sorry there we go so you want it to be beveled by the object and now you can see that we actually have it coming into together quite nicely so now all that we need to do is make sure that we take our curve in edit mode and then you can like just drag it out. So we want it to be fairly long. So let's do something like we'll drag it all the way up to there. And now you'll see that our curve is actually, 
Um, I'm working with very large sizes here, and the only reason for that was was because uh, in the beginning um, our screw object uh, I didn't resize it properly, so it's not really going to matter at the end of the day. Everything you can just resize as much as what you want. Uh, right there we go. So I kind of got like this curve going with it. Um, I just want to take this one and I'm going to move it inward. Alright, so I'm just also going to take this then and then holding Alt right click and fill that face uh, just in case there's ever like a overlapping area that we've missed. So it just looks like the cable's coming into something instead of just going into and then you can see into uh, the entire device over there. Uh, and then what we need to do is we can decrease the resolution. If you decrease the resolution, let's do it on two, then it does kind of still give like a, a nice resolution or effect, but uh, not too high in the poly count. Okay, so that is our first cable then. Um, I think the, the height and everything is pretty okay. We could probably mess around with it a bit more. What you can do in edit mode is you can and instead of just um, uh, grabbing the ones that you have, you can hit E to extrude and you can add, but it all really depends on how much detail you want to add into the model itself. I think this is more than sufficient. So I'm going to take this and then I'm going to, I'm going to take the entire lighting fixtures and everything. I'm going to hit Shift D and duplicate it and move it again to a layer. As I said, it's nice to keep copies just in case. Um, I don't think I took the inside part, so I'm just going to move that one as well. It's nice to have copies just in case you make a mistake and you can't uh, rectify it or you need to restart your entire process because this can get fairly lengthy if you're going to create multiple lights. Okay, so that is essentially the process done in creating your first light. Now, you need to remember that this is still a curve, so you need to convert it to a, a mesh itself. So for you to do that, you hit Alt and then C, and then you get an option Curve from Mesh or Text or Mesh from Curve, Meta, Surf or Text. So we want the second one, and if you look at it now, you'll see that, there we go, it is actually Geometry Data now. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to select all of these and we're just going to hit Control J to join them. And I'm going to right click over here. I'm going to hit split the area and I'm going to go into the UV image editor. Okay, this is still one of our old textures that we have available here. So this doesn't really matter. Uh, we can create just a new one and call it light bulb. And the resolution on it's not really going to matter because we're not going to create a texture for this directly in here. We're going to apply some, some of the materials that we've already made. Okay, so then we're just going to hit this and select everything. Hit U, Smart UV Project, and I'm going to add a slight island margin. And it's not perfect, but we do not need the perfect UVs at the current moment because we are still just kind of like in our building phase. Uh, let's try and okay, it won't let me deselect those. Uh, what I am going to try and do is then just uh, take all of these and rotate it 90 and then put it over there and just kind of like scale it out. Okay, so that's essentially just basic UV mapping done. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, as I said, that we are going to work on this much more uh, later. We're going to just uh, cover some basic or much better UV map layout as these objects are fairly basic and the way that we're using our materials at the current moment, we don't need a lot of detail for it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit Control L to select everything linked here. I'm going to go over to the Materials tab, create a new material, and let's call this uh, Light Fixture Fixture. There we go. Assign, and then this one as well. We're going to create a new one. 
new and call it light glass sign and this one as well I'm going to create a new one light bulb sign and then last one new one I'm going to call this cable and click assign now once again I just want to run through this because this is something that will come up much later on you have to think about draw calls when you're busy creating your meshes or when you're going through your um, second pass to increase performance now you have to think of it like this later on we are going to use object masking which would be much more efficient way of doing it from a performance standpoint every time we create a new material that is a new draw call for the engine to uh, essentially call on the graphics card to draw something so um, if you look at the the shooter example uh, of unreal um, the on um, in the unreal uh, marketplace they have the shooter game example they i don't think they ever go above 400 draw calls now you can imagine if we have one object like this it it calls upon the the model itself and then it calls upon the textures and if it calls on something like this it calls on it five times and then if you place maybe 10 or 20 of these inside of a level you can already see that that's already way higher than what it should be but the way that we are doing this is just to prototype everything from a, a start point and later on we're going to just do a as i say keep on saying a second pass where we'll be increasing performance and we'll be trying to reduce the draw calls because already this map as it is here i think already sits at about six or seven hundred draw calls and if you look at the shooter game example from uh, the unreal marketplace you'll see that that's about four or five hundred draw calls at any given point and that's a complete level with everything already inside of it so uh, there is a lot of room for performance uh, to increase performance, but that will be done only much later Okay, so uh, Enough rambling uh, what I said there uh, what we're just going to do here now is I Just want to check the sizes so you can see that the dimensions are completely off. This is like 200 meters So that should be about two meters. So we essentially need to scale it down uh, let's scale it down. Okay, that's not quite working with me. Let's zoom in a bit more. Okay, and we get to something. Four meter sounds okay. Uh, let's do, there we go. So now we kind of got exactly the sizes that we had before. And now you'll see that it's fairly small. Uh, let's center our view again. And now that seems to make a slight bit more sense. Okay. So now with that done, what I just want to do is I actually want to set the geometry um, center to about that point over there. Which might make it a little bit easier if we want to place everything. So let's just click over here uh, in object mode. You can click over there and I'm just going to set origin to... 3d cursor okay so that's easier for us to rotate it if we want to place more inside of the the um, blender editor and if we want it centered with unreal itself remember we need to move it to the center of the game world over here so let's get somewhere close to that that looks okay and that's pretty much that part done and I think I'm ready to export this to Unreal Engine 4 just so we can see what it looks like. So I'm going to hit File, Export, FBX, and I'm going to hit uh, Selected Objects. I'm going to leave everything else as is. Geometries, I'm going to use Edge Detect for smoothing. And under Armature, I'm going to disable the leaf bone. And I'm just going to call this uh, Light um, Cable bulb well, let's just call it light fixtures because we are eventually going to use more than one 
Okay. And then I'm going to go over to Unreal. I'm going to hit import. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, let's just see. I think I put it over here. Light fixtures, there we go. Hit import. And if we open it, we'll see that's what it looks like. And if we go over Yeah, I think I just disabled the details pane here on the left and you see it's got four different materials. So now essentially what we can do is we can just go through the materials that we already created. So the glass one, uh, let's just see which one is it. Uh, we just need to go to materials, glass, and let's just see, it's not that one, it's that one. Okay, so the top one we're going to use like the couch leg material that we created before and then for I just want to get like a basic uh, one attached to it now so we can see what it looks like and then lastly we're going to like use something similar to the window frame um, for the cable itself. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I do want to create a new material for the light itself so we'll call this light and i'm going to open it and new right click i'm going to call upon a vector parameter and i'm going to set this to something like a yellowish click ok and i'm going to put this into the emissive and then what we're going to do is just add a lerp. We're going to feed this into A and then feed that into emissive color. And then what I'm going to do is just make the constant B brighter. That looks, uh, let's maybe go for something like five. Actually, just to kind of get like the bloom effect on the side. So four should be fine. We click save. And then what we're going to do is just make sure it's selected. And I'm going to then hit it like that. And you'll see, we can make it much brighter if we want to. We can also actually make all of this much higher detail if we want to. But for now, what we need, this is more than sufficient. And if we're going to then go over to our models, we can like drag this into the world. And then we have our lighting fixture done. Okay, so now essentially just one more thing that we require, and I'm just quickly going to run through that because we already created it before inside of Blender. Um, I'm just going to, let's just search for it here quickly. Where did I put it? There we go. Our um, floor panel that we created before, as you can see, it's a normal triangle. What I do want to do is I'm just going to select these edges over here. I'm going to hit W and then subdivide it. Uh, actually, I think what I want to do is just this edge and that one and then hit subdivide. There we go. So you can see if you use edge select mode, you select the two top edges and you, then you just subdivide this piece over here. And then if we grab it, you'll see that there we go. We've already changed it into a square. And as far as I can tell, no, it doesn't retain its uh, original normals, but uh, we can easily fix that. Now, before I carry on and mess with this part too much, because I like to keep everything inside of the editor, because you can always come back to it. Uh, let's just create a duplicate and repeat the process. I'm going to right click top. And bottom edge and we're using edge select mode a w subdivide and then hit that edge over there and then g to grab and then just kind of like move it where i want it to be i'm going to select everything here hit u to uv project and there we go it's unwrapped then the same process export fbx all the options should still be fine over here and let's just see, we made it floor, tile, 
triangle before, so let's just change this to floor tile square. There we go. Hit E to export, and then we're going to jump over to Unreal again. Import floor tile square. And I just want to grab that texture, that one there, table generic white that we used before. Sorry, material net texture. And then I'm just going to go into the square and table white generic. Here we go. Save. And um, I didn't center it when I imported it, so that, that's going to be a slight bit of a problem. It's not going to be perfectly centered. Um, so uh, just be aware if you, if you're, um, uh, well, let's just show it one more time. I've shown it a few times before. If your pivot point is not centered with your model, you have to take into account that the pivot point is the center of the world. So that is actually the right pivot point with the way that we exported it. I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to move it back over here. It uh, doesn't matter if it overlaps the other model because we are exporting it, um, the selected object only. So there we go. I'm going to import it again. Okay, just notice I deleted it, but I didn't delete it from the world. And then one last time, going to apply that material. And there we go, it's done. All right, so that is the basics to, I know it's a fairly long tutorial to call it basics, but that is the basics just to create our lighting fixture along with a cable. And as I said, you can create many different variations in the cable. You can add additional details. I noticed that it's not actually that many triangles. Um, I mean, scenes in video games are significantly higher than what it used to be. So uh, actually, if you remove that centerpiece, you could probably cut that by three quarters. So uh, it all really depends on what you want your light to look like and what you want it to do. Uh, then also, as I said, this each is a draw call. So just be aware of that. We are going to fix everything by just using a texture masking method. And what we're going to do is I'm just quickly going to create different variations of this light. And then I'm going to uh, set up our scene by just adding the roof panels and everything. It's essentially going to be the same way that we created the floor panel. We're just going to drag everything in, place it how we want it to be. And then we're going to get like the final look that we want. So it all really depends on what you want to do. Uh, I'm just going to like start to get some kind of, okay, um, look going here. Then we could like drag the light in. And as you can see, it like snaps to the object that we wanted to, um, kind of wanted to be in between those grooves. So we could do something like that and something like that. Now, as I said, do take note that, um, our inspirational video, uh, the cables do kind of like, um, go over to the side to try and uh, fool the player to make it think that it's actually lying up here. I just like my straight cables that aren't really doing anything um, like that. So it all, once again, it all really depends on what you want to do in your level and how you want to create it. Okay, so that is pretty much it for how to create it. And as you can see, there's like the nice bloom effect from our light. Um, gives a much cooler effect and it looks uh, significantly better. So um, that is essentially how you just do it. You are uh, then just welcome to like stack your tiles wherever you need them to be. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go for a look similar to the mirror's edge look. So uh, it takes a little bit of tweaking, but those are the basic essentials you need to create your own uh, lights and your own uh, roof tiles, which is essentially exactly the same as the floor tiles.
All right. So I hope you guys like what you saw. If you uh, liked it, please leave a like. If you didn't, you can leave a dislike. Leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. I thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.